With the Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback search underway, a new option could have entered the picture in the 2023 Reese's Senior Bowl down here in Mobile, Alabama. That's coming up right now on Locked On Bucks. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to the Locked On Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we thank you for making us your first listen or view of the day. I'm David Harrison, staff writer for BucksGameDay.com, part of Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation. My co-host, James Jarko, the deputy editor of BucksNation.com, part of SB Nation. Unfortunately, not here due to some technical uh, difficulties, but you can still find him on Twitter at JR underscore Bucks. I am at T Harrison 82. The show is at Locked on Bucks. And we thank you again for making us your first listen or view of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide. And they have a special offer for our listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. I am back now here in my home office, uh, back from the Senior Bowl down in Mobile, Alabama. A great experience, uh, I think, for everybody around. And we're going to get into Mock Draft Monday. Coming up, though, we're going to talk about what it really means when teams come evaluate players at the Senior Bowl and put a little bit of context to everything that is coming out of Mobile here at the uh, conclusion of the weekend. So, Mock Draft Monday, we're going to do a Senior Bowl Mock Draft Monday. What does that really mean? Well, it means that I'm only going to be picking players in this Mock Draft that come from the Reese's Senior Bowl. I'm doing that uh, for two reasons. One, we just got done with Senior Bowl, a lot of fresh information, so it's a really cool mechanism that we can use to kind of compartmentalize and organize a list of players that we want to talk about and and share with you what we saw uh, down in Mobile this year. Two, it also kind of highlights the talent that's really coming out of Mobile. There's are there going to be some reaches here? Probably going to be some reaches here. And so, uh, again, it's important to understand the context of what we're doing here today and the reason for the exercise. Not a predictive mock draft. I'm telling you that Jason Light is going to be taking X player at number 19 or at number whatever. More so looking at who the available options at those positions in the first three rounds. We're not looking past the third round. There's a bunch of compensatory picks that have to get awarded. We don't know where those are going yet. So we're getting a little too much into uh, the simulation part of it if we go past uh, the third round. So we're just doing the first three rounds here. Uh, but again, shining a light on the senior bowl talent uh, and, and all of those guys. So gone before number 19 from the senior bowl rosters. Nobody. There's no secret that this year's senior bowl roster wasn't as sexy as last year's, not as many high profile prospects uh, as there were last year. So it shouldn't really be a huge surprise that every senior bowl prospect is still available when the Buccaneers come on the clock at 19, according, according to the, the uh, mock draft uh, that I ran. You may run across a mock draft that has a senior bowl player going ahead of time. Again, mock drafts dive into a lot of different things. Um, talking to Kyle Krabs, Joe Marino of the Draft Network and of Locked On Dolphins, Locked On Bills, respectively. Uh, one of them recently did up a mock draft that had the Carolina Panthers trading up for the number one overall pick. Will it happen? Maybe, maybe not. Could it happen? It absolutely could. The point of the exercise, as all mock drafts are, is if this happened, what then would transpire and what are the uh, the new dimensional kind of options facing each team uh following so going to the senior bowl nobody taken uh in the first 19 from the senior bowl rosters which leaves us the top three prospects according to pro football focuses big board as it stands today number 27 overall guard osiris torrance out of florida number 31 overall tight end luke musgrave out of oregon state number 34 overall linebacker andre carter the second out of army now andre carter's a little bit different remember when you guys are going through these sites like just because they're listed as a linebacker doesn't necessarily mean they're going to play linebacker for your team, right? A lot of guys do edge. Saw Andre doing some work standing up. Saw him doing some work with his hand in the ground. So it's really going to be scheme dependent, coach dependent on where they see Andre uh, fitting into their scheme on how they use him. He's going to go to an NFL team. Don't know if it's going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm not sending him to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here at number 19. Tight end Luke Musgrave, very solid receiving tight end. Does need some work in the blocking game. Capable blocker, right? But not, not, a, not an expert blocker by any means. Uh, more of a, more of a Travis Kelsey than he is uh, anything else. Not saying he's going to be Travis Kelsey, just you know, more of a of a pass receiving tight end than he is a, a blocking tight end. Blocks better from in line than he does when he's kind of split out and then expected to help out 
uh, in the run game and space, stuff like that. So he's certainly an option, uh, especially Tom's not coming back. Gronk's probably not coming back. Uh, so certainly an option there. Uh, but then you have Gardo Cyrus Torrance. I think when you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers roster, you're getting Ryan Jensen back. Shaq Mason was there, you know, kind of a solid, kind of a solid fixture. Tristan Wirfs hopefully is going to be healthy. Donovan Smith, we'll see what the future holds for him uh, as well. But what you do know is you have at least one guard spot that you need to reinforce. Osiris Torrance is a guy that can certainly reinforce those things. Coming into Mobile, the concern about him was how nimble was he, how agile was he, could he be a pull, uh, pulling lead blocker, things like that. I think he showed a little bit more athleticism than maybe people expected to see coming into it, which is good and which is a good sign for his continued development as he continues to work out uh, ahead of the NFL scouting combine. So, but what, but the, but what you also notice is that he didn't lose the strength, right? He's kind of known for his strength at the point of attack, able to hold up against uh, pass rushers and blitzers, run defenders, all those things. And you saw that again. Now he was, uh, I've seen a knock, I think on, on the draft networks, draft profile for Osiris, uh, that he tends to kind of drop his anchor, right? To kind of try to dig in and just hold up uh, against the guy. The problem with that is if now, if you get beats, you as the offensive line are probably on the ground and your guy is probably running free or you're getting a holding penalty. Um, you did see some of that in in Mobile, so you definitely want to see him continue to work on that, keep the feet moving, kind of keep keep that agility going. Um, so we'll see if he can do that. But certainly did well uh, on the field at the Senior Bowl. Certainly didn't not you know take away anything from him. Uh, showed a lot of strength. So I think in this situation at number nineteen, with those three Senior Bowl players kind of leading the charge, we would go with Florida guard Osiris Torrance from uh, in the first. All right, so we have Torrance. We've we've added another guard, a potentially starting caliber guard to our offensive line. Join Ryan Jensen, Tristan Wirfs, maybe Donovan Smith, uh, Osiris Torrance. Who knows if Luke Gedeke makes uh, takes a step forward, you may end up with a starting caliber young guard there to go along with the unit. That would be great. Um, but that is our first pick here in the Senior Bowl mock draft Monday here on Locked On Bucks. We're going to do two more rounds. We got round two, round three. Again, looking at Senior Bowl prospects here on Locked On Bucks. And today's episode of Locked On Bucks is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. Unfortunately, life does not come with a user's manual. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Maybe you don't feel like you know which way to go, left, right, up, or down. Doesn't matter. Therapists, though, are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learning how to do to develop productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of your life that it possibly can be. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient, secure, and accessible anywhere 100% online. Everyone deserves to feel their best, and BetterHelp makes it easier to get started. All the benefits of in-person therapy, in therapy are available, plus it's more convenient, more accessible, and better yet, more affordable. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire. It is. It's super brief, super easy. Just be honest on it, and you'll get matched with a therapist. And if things aren't clicking with that therapist, you can switch at any time with no questions asked. It couldn't be simpler. It's all about you and fitting into your life. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right person. Get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. This episode of Locked On Bucks also brought to you by FanDuel. This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America in FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better because they have so many great features that make betting sports, betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel today and you can bet on Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown first. Those same game parlays are dangerously fun. So please make sure you're being responsibly or uh, doing it responsibly. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid for your winnings instantly. I recently, not the last couple of games, but during the winning streak for the Washington Wizards, I went Daniel Gafford over seven and a half rebounds. He hit the over. I got my money as soon as the clock hit zero in that game. So join fan join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports book of the National Football League. Thanks again for making the Locked On Bucks podcast first listener, first view every single day. Now, our top senior bowl targets on the board at pick 50 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the second round. 
Uh, again, we've got some third round compensatory picks that still have to get set. So we're not going to go past the third round, but we'll start off here in the second round. Uh, some senior bowl prospects came off the board before we got back on the clock at number 50. Edgewell McDonald, the fourth, Jamie Robinson, Nathaniel Dell, Darnell Wright, the tackle out of Tennessee, and Cody Mock, the uh, offensive lineman out of North Dakota State. I think he's listed as a tackle. Certainly did some guard work uh, at Reese's Senior Bowl, did pretty well there. They're all off the board, so they're no longer available. So at pick 50, we have PFF's number 53 overall prospect center, John Michael Schmidt out of Minnesota. We've got number 54 overall edge, Keon White out of Georgia Tech. And we've got number 58 safety, Sidney Brown out of Illinois. Those are our top three guys. I love John Michael Schmitz. To me, easily the number one center in this in this draft. Uh, not a first round guy. Don't think there are any first round interior linemen uh, before say pick 20, 25. You know what I mean? And and that's that's kind of a stretch because we got the Bucks at nineteen taking Torrance, and that kind of shows you. You know, I would love a trade back, but we're not doing trades in this thing, uh, making it more complicated than it has to be. So when I look at these three, Edge. Could the Buccaneers use an edge? I mean, yeah, they could. You know, Sha Shaq got Shaq got hurt. There was a report. Uh, some opponents were kind of saying that Shaquille Barrett was already losing a step before he got injured. Then he got injured. Anthony Nelson, again, on the roster, great. That's great. I, I've already kind of gone on record saying that he's not a starting caliber edge rusher. Carl Nassib is a good contributor, uh, certainly a good locker room guy. But, you know, again, if you have to go a whole season without Joe Tryon, Shrink, or Shaquille Barrett, do you want it to be any of those guys to me? I don't. So Keon White certainly... Uh, an attractive option here, but I think I'm going Sydney Brown. I'm going with the Illinois safety here uh, at number 50, the number 58 overall player on uh, PFF's big board. And bottom line, guys, Sydney Brown showed a lot of versatility at the Senior Bowl. Covered tight ends, covered slot, covered you know uh, corners. I'm not talking about like up at the line. He's a safety, right? So I'm not talking necessarily up at the line, man. You know all that stuff. But he did do a lot of good things and showed that he could hold his own against various types of receivers and weapons Now the quarterback playing in, in mobile this year, not the, the toughest. So, was, you know, the DBs didn't get the toughest break, but I think he showed a lot of character traits and a lot of player traits that stood out on film. And if you go back and watch games that you maybe haven't seen before, you'll see some of those things reinforced and it gives him a good platform. to now go into training for the combine, come out of it in Indianapolis and kind of show scouts and executives that he's not only everything they thought he was, but maybe even, uh, a little bit better. So I go with safety, Sydney Brown. So we've got all of us a guard, Osiris Torrance. I go safety, Sydney Brown here. Mike Edwards, solid dude. Anton Winfield Jr., solid dude behind them. I just don't have a lot of faith in what we've got going on there in Tampa. So I think Sydney Brown is a good fit here for need and also a very talented player to get uh, in, the, in the first half of day one. So moving into the third round, gone before pick 82, John Michael Schmitz, Keon White. Now they're no longer on the board. You pretty much expect that to be a thing but also a run on edge defenders. Isaiah McGuire out of Missouri, Carl Brooks out of Bowling Green, Derek Hall out of Auburn. So I don't know if that makes us regret not going edge, but those three guys from the Senior Bowl coming off the board. Also offensive tackle Matthew Bergeron out of Syracuse. I know a lot of people looking offensive tackle, maybe thinking let's replace uh, Donovan Smith. I got to be honest with you guys, from, from field play, I get it. I totally get it. But Donovan kind of mentioned there were some personal things going on. There were some things kind of impacting him. The coaching staff knows how significant that is. If the coaching staff believes that is truly the explanation and a better Donovan will come back next season, I think you might want to brace yourself for Don, Donovan Smith being the left tackle next season because, again, if those things are true and the coaching staff believes it and, and, and agrees with it, then I think that they probably roll with him. They look to address some other areas. Doesn't mean 2024 we're not back here talking about left tackle, but I do think – there is a world where we are talking about Don Smith being the left tackle for the Buccaneers in 2023, despite many of your objections. Available at number 82, however, we have offensive tackle Dewan Jones from the Ohio State Buckeyes, ranked number 88. I think that number will climb during the process, but as of right now, he's still there, so we're looking at him. Number 89 overall quarterback, Hendon Hooker, who did not play, did not practice, but he was in Mobile, so he counts. Number 100 overall safety, Chris Smith, the second out of Georgia. Again, another very versatile guy, but we already went safety. We're not going safety back-to-back, -back, so obviously we're not going with Chris Smith. Some other interesting prospects that are, that are still on the board here. Number 106 overall linebacker Dorian Williams out of Tulane had a very solid week, showed a lot of versatility and some range uh, as well, and you know the Buccaneers bracing to potentially have to replace uh, Levante David, um, and if Levante does officially go away, then maybe this, this pick could change. Um, uh, and in future iterations, number 110 overall running back, Roshan Johnson from Texas. Uh, again, depending on what's going to happen with Leonard Fournette, 
we, we like Rashad White. Maybe they add Roshan to that to that mix. I'm not against necessarily drafting a running back every single season because uh, it's just a tough position to maintain health in. So get talent there every single year. And the number one 14 overall edge, KJ Henry out of Clemson, another guy who did some good things during the Senior Bowl this year. And of course, further down the list, I think like 135 somewhere, uh, uh, Tajay Spears out of uh, Tulane, the Tulane, the running back. I, I you know I think made the most money for himself at least from a media and fan standpoint. Uh, during the senior bowl, he's also still available. We're going, I'm going Hendon Hooker. I'm going with Tennessee quarterback Hendon Hooker. Look, super talented guy. A lot of people think that he would have won the Heisman had he not gotten injured. I know he got injured. This is obviously a move that's more about the future than it is about the present, but we're going to get deeper into this quarterback conversation. I don't believe the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are in full rebuild mode. I think they're in reload mode. And if you're in reload mode, you're looking at a veteran quarterback, whether it be Derek Carr, Aaron Rodgers is someone that, that people have floated around, even though I think he's going to the Jets. Uh, I don't think that's even a thing. Jimmy Garoppolo, maybe. So if you're not sold on Kyle Trask, which going into his third season, if you were sold that Kyle Trask could be a starter, you would probably be setting the stage for him to be able to compete. If you're not sold on Kyle Trask being the starter quarterback, I think you bring in a Derek Carr, you bring in a Jimmy Garoppolo, and then you bring in Hendon Hooker. You give him that time to heal. You give him that time to learn. And then maybe in two or three years now, you've got a quarterback that you drafted in the third round who can actually become your next starter when that Jimmy G one or two year contract is up, the Derek Carr three year contract is up, what have you. Get more into kind of those conversations, but kind of leaning on that conversation already. I'm going Hendon Hooker here at 82. So we have Gardo Cyrus Torrance out of Florida in the first round. Second round, we go safety. Sydney Brown out of Illinois, and then here in the third round, I'm going quarterback Hendon Hooker from the Tennessee Volunteers, and that is our Senior Bowl mock draft. But what does it all really mean? What's the point of the Senior Bowl? What do we really learn from the Senior Bowl? All of that coming up next here on Locked on Bucks. And today's episode of Locked on Bucks is brought to you by Blue Nile. Valentine's Day is coming up, which means romance is in the air more than usual. And I don't need to tell you all, that you probably had your date plans on the calendar for a week. You probably found the perfect gift. Have you? And if you haven't, then you need to go to our friends at BlueNile.com to find jewelry that is as unique as she is with the modern convenience of online shopping. At BlueNile.com, you can find the perfect piece of jewelry for life special moments or even create the custom engagement ring of her dreams. Your simple online tools let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity as well as the setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers We'll then handcraft that perfect piece to your specifications for your significant other. Blue Nile provides ex expert guidance, in-depth educational materials, and unique online tools that place you in control so you can forget the usual hassles of the jewelry shopping process and focus on the romance. Blue Nile's diamond price guarantee allows you to compare a competitor's diamond against one of theirs. Blue Nile can also even meet or beat their price. Every order is insured and arrives quickly in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shipping is free. And so are returns. I've already got my Valentine's gift lined up. You need to make sure you are you go get yours lined up if you haven't already too. Right now, you can save up to 50% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com for after up to 50% off. BlueNile.com. Wrapping up things on the Locked on Bucks podcast today here. And we're we, so we've done our mock draft, right? So we got Osiris Torrance from, from the Florida Gators going first round of the Buccaneers. Uh, we've got... Uh, Sydney Brown, safety out of Illinois, going second round. And we've got quarterback Hendon Hooker in the third round. Again, senior bowl prospects allowed only. Uh, so are there some other players that potentially could have been on the board that we would take uh, there? Of course, you know, maybe there are. But again, every mock draft kind of has its purpose. What are we looking to evaluate? What are we looking to dive into? And in this universe, multiverse of mock drafts, we are diving into the senior bowl prospects only. So that's how that rolled out. Look, I. Personally, I'm not against that class, to be quite honest with you. Like, that's a pretty good class, even if you're restricting yourself to only specific types of prospects. Of course, in the, in the comments on YouTube, uh, on Twitter, in the DMs, whatever you want at Locked On Bucks, uh, let me know. Let us know what you think. Grade them, comment on them, tell us what you would have done. If there's another Senior Bowl guy you would have taken first, uh, let us know. Of course, the Senior Bowl is over. Uh, those prospects are now onto their next phase of preparation. You know what I mean? Like we're going to sit here till the scouting combine and we're going to overanalyze everything that happened there. We're going to start watching more films, some more games, college stuff, talk to people, hear rumors, 
Uh, obviously, the Bucks have an office coordinator to hire. All kinds of other things are going to happen. Um, but these players are now moving into the next phase of their preparation, their training. Guys like Osir- Osiris Torrance, they're out there working the show teams. They can be more agile. They can be faster off the line of scrimmage. Uh, guys like Sidney Brown, they want to show they can keep that physicality along with being a versatile pass defender. Uh, Hendon Hooker going to continue to work on his rehab, get ready for even more interviews, show that football IQ, that leadership, that determination, get somebody to fall in love with them. But we are just going to sit here and talk about all of it as we get through and, and develop even more opinions uh, and analysis on these players. So it's important that while we do that, we also understand what everything really means, starting with the senior bowl. So what do NFL executives, coaches, and scouts look for at the senior bowl? And this is something that I focused on over the last week a lot more than usual. Usually I'm just kind of there. I'm watching the practices. I'm looking for players to jump off the field and I'm writing my notes to bring to you and say, this is a guy who made money. This is a guy who made money. This is a guy who made money. But the truth of the matter is these guys are making most of their money behind the scenes. It's in the interviews. It's in the coaching rooms. It's on the practice field from a coaching perspective, not a performance perspective. That 70 yard pass or that 70 yard run, that pick six, it's sexy. It's great. It gets the media excited. It gets the fans excited. It sets Twitter on fire. And don't be wrong, they love seeing it too. But really what happens is, what happens when you get your butt chewed on the field in front of a live studio audience? What happens when you come in and get handed an NFL playbook? What happens when you're in the meeting room and a coach is challenging your technique? What happens when you talk to these, these NFL GMs and coaches in, their, in your interviews, which, by the way, they all interview with everybody. So if you're hearing X player spoke to the Bucks, no duh. They all spoke to the Bucks. So uh, that kind of stuff always comes out this type of year. They all spoke to the Bucs. So unless that report is saying something a little bit more in depth than just the Buccaneers spoke with this guy, they all do. Um, so what are, so what is it they're looking for? They're looking for personalities, guys. Okay. Like the game itself is really for the fans and it's a moneymaker. They got to fund this thing. They got to pay everybody that's working it. Their staff is there year round. Their scouts are on the road year round. So I met a lot of the senior bowl scouts this year. They're great dudes enjoying their little bit of time off. You know what I mean? That they had this, this last couple of weeks. But again, right now, they're on their way. They're on their way. They're getting ready for college camps and and the next season and looking at other prospects. Like These guys are working 24-7. So it's important to understand really how much to take away from this. The players that did poorly, I think that's where we need to start the most. The players that did poorly. So if you read a story about a guy, X player, didn't do all that great. I'll look at Blake Freeland, the the offensive lineman out of BYU. Didn't have the greatest week. Right, He got beat on a lot of one-on-ones. He got beat in team drills a little bit. They moved him around. He looked worse at right tackle than he looked at left tackle. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Don't kill him. You know what I mean? Like if you, if you're looking at your mock draft, you're like, Oh, he's like a second, third round prospect, but he had a terrible senior bowl. Don't drop him to the fifth round. You know what I mean? Because the execs aren't going to do that. The scouts aren't going to do that. Now what they're going to do is they're going to say, okay, well, Blake looked really bad in these past sets. Let's go back now and let's look at the game film, the BYU game film. And is this something that we can attest to the new week? the new scheme, the new language, the, having never played left or whoever's playing left guard or right guard next to him? Or is this something that we now see also happen on film at BYU? And I'll tell you right now, if it's happening on the film at BYU, even though we, the media, and you, the fans, may have him as a second, third round pick type of guy, if it's happening on film already, those scouts don't have him there. I promise you that. If, if, those, if the flaws we saw in Mobile are the flaws you see on tape, I promise you those scouts do not have him as highly as maybe the media. So when we talk about high risers, and high, high fall, you know, low followers, whatever it is, that's more of a media mechanism, right? These NFL teams aren't really looking at it that way. So then you look at a running back like, like Tajay Spears from, from Tulane, who really literally won the week. I'll say right now, people in Tulane are not surprised, right? Uh, Tulane sideline reporter Matty Hudak was on ground in Mobile with us, like with our group. And, you know, we're with her and she's, she's telling us ahead of time about this kid. She's telling us, you need to keep your eye on him. You need to keep your eye on Dorian Williams, a linebacker as well. And she's telling us about their character and how, who they are as young men. And she flat out said, this is going to be a good week for Tulane because they're going to show up and they're going to show out. And they did. And so it's a surprise to you if you've not watched Tulane, which, you know, Tulane doesn't have. They're not, they're not you know, Ohio State. They're not the Georgias. But if Tulane knows it, well, then the scouts who have visited Tulane know it. The scouts, the scouts who have watched Tulane know it. So, um, and don't be wrong, they do get – a, a nice boost from doing well at the senior bowl. But these, it's it's more about the guys who do poorly. The guys who do poorly do not get a, a huge knock on them, as maybe as big of a knock as, as we do in the media and then the fans do uh, sometimes. Well, State has a grain of salt. So the bad, you know, it's there. But go back to the film. 
go back, go, go to YouTube and watch these games that are available out there or a streaming service that maybe has some replay options and see if what the bad is that you saw at the senior bowl is also the bad that you see in the games. If it's not lean on the film, but keep an eye on it and then come back to the combine. Does he look stiffer? Does he look bigger, but slower? You know what I mean? Those are the kinds of things that you need to look for. So just want to add some context to what we see out in the senior bowl. It was a great time. Really appreciate you guys uh, holding it down with James. Appreciate James holding down locked on bucks while I was over with locked on NFL draft doing our live shows over there. Make sure if you haven't heard those, uh, check them out. YouTube, wherever you get this podcast, you can get that podcast locked on NFL draft. We did three days of live episodes. You can find those there. I drop a little bit of my own impressions and analysis of these players, but I also hosted the last two uh, episodes. It, it, it was interesting. It was interesting hosting that show. So, um, yeah, so I appreciate you guys coming through all week. Appreciate you coming through here for Mock Draft Monday, Senior Bowl edition. We will be back next Mock Draft Monday with more Mock Drafts. We want your Mock Drafts. So as you're going through these things, screenshot your results, send them to us in the, G in the, in the emails, send them to us in the DMs, whatever it is. We'll put them up on the show. We'll go over what you went over. It'll be a good time, and, and uh, everybody will enjoy it. Until then, we thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listener, your first view every day. For your second, check out Locked On NFL, bringing you the local insights you love to the national spotlight with daily conversations on the biggest NFL stories. Locked On NFL, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. James and I will be back with another episode tomorrow. In the meantime, if you want to join that conversation, this conversation, share your mock drafts with us. Drop your comments in YouTube. Drop your DMs. Uh, to Locked On Bucks on Twitter or drop everything in the email box at Locked On Bucks Podcast at gmail.com. For James Jarko, I'm David Harrison. Until we speak again, make sure you're checking out everything going on at BucksGameDay.com, at BucksNation.com. If you're out and about, please be safe. Be kind to one another. Wash your hands, fire the cannons, and thank you for joining me right here on Locked On Bucks. <laughs>